scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Confidants, welcome to Champagne Secrets. We're about to head over to the Secret Chalet for your midweek dose of encouragement and empowerment. So we're usually on here and we spend so much time talking about toxicity that I thought, why not balance it out with some inspiration, you know? So we're going to talk about the Heartbreak Hotel because I'm really tired of my sisters and brothers being stuck in heartbreak and not knowing how to get out. Now this this might not be for everybody because some people just want to be toxic and that's fine. I want to build a community of individuals who think, encourage, empower, inspire, and can discuss tea and be respectful while doing it. I'm not a reader. (laughs) I just tell you what it is and move on. That might not be everybody's cup of tea and I'm fine with that. God will send the community that is meant for me and this channel. And you will be accepted and cherished and encouraged all at the same time. I love to laugh and key, but my forte is empowerment. So that's why I'm starting this Wellness Waves Wednesdays. Almost a tongue tie, right? (laughs) We are up to 48 subscribers on our road to 1,000. And I want to thank each one of you. I think majority of you came from the dollhouse. You know I love me some the doll. (laughs) It's the beat for me. (laughs) I thank her for sending you and I thank you for coming. If y'all want a good juice, go holler at the doll. But when you're finished and want to sip, savor, and spill while you wind down from your day, come chill with me, the Empress. I am not monetized on this channel yet, of course, but if you want to support the channel, you can do so by hitting the cash app at Champagne Secrets. You see it on the screen, so let's get into it. On your way into the chalet, grab your glass of champagne off the table, kick back in one of those chase lounges, and join us as we journey through the Heartbreak Hotel. And you already know I'm sipping on my Moet and Chandon. Come on now. So let's start by describing this hotel, right? The Heartbreak Hotel is an architectural masterpiece. It stands as an embodiment of our deepest desires and dreams. From the outside looking in, it's a breathtaking spectacle, right? A symbol of opulence, elegance, and the promises of endless joy. Its facade glistens under the sun, adorned with intricate details and shimmering glass windows that reflect the sky and the surrounding beauty. Grand, sweeping archways lead you to a grand entrance where a magnificent chandelier hangs like a radiant jewel, casting a warm, inviting glow. The exterior gardens are meticulously manicured with vibrant, fragrant flowers in full bloom, winding pathways and fountains that dance to the melodies of the wind. Guests approach the Heartbreak Hotel with hope and excitement, captivated by its resplendent exterior, which stands as an embodiment of everything you thought you wanted. Upon entering, Guests are greeted by a vast marble lobby adorned with classical artwork and elegant furnishings. The scent of fresh flowers, lavender and vanilla linger in the air and soft, soothing music plays in the background. Friendly, impeccably dressed staff offer warm smiles, promising to make your stay unforgettable. The rooms are luxurious on the outside, Furnished with the finest materials and designer decor, each room is a work of art carefully designed to cater to your every desire. 
plush oversized beds with high thread count linens invite you to sink into their embrace. Floor to ceiling windows offer panoramic views of a paradise that seems too good to be true. Sounds like something right out of Dubai, right? <laughs> but does this remind you of your broken relationships that left you in heartbreak? On the outside, they look so good. Chiseled abs or figure eight curves. They said the right words, gave you money when you asked the best sex of your life. The promise of a knight in shining armor or a princess waiting for her prince. Everything looked good on the outside. Until you realize your knight in shining armor was a dark knight with a few screws loose. He wasn't there to save you. He was there to trap you. She wasn't there to help you build. She was there to drain you dry. Mm -hmm. Let me go on back to talking about this hotel so y'all won't get upset that I'm talking about you. <laughs> so as you turn the key and you settle into your room, and the door slowly closes and locks behind you. The room transforms and you see the truth. The Heartbreak Hotel with its stunning exterior and lavish decor is a mere facade. The beauty and luxury it promises are empty and cold, like a mirage in the desert. The rooms reveal a different reality for you where the opulence disguises a profound sense of despair and the reality of where you are sets in. The Heartbreak Hotel isn't just a catchy name, it's a trap. One that you've placed yourself in and one that you'll have to get yourself out of. With all of its captivating exterior and luxurious decor, it serves as a vivid metaphor for the trap we often find ourselves in when we allow our, our emotions to lead without the wisdom of our intellect. It symbolizes the entanglement that occurs when, when we fail to protect our heart, our mind, and our emotions from both those external provocations and those unprovoked internal turmoils that we go through. It's a reminder that without the discerning of wisdom, the most alluring facades can conceal profound inner struggles, ultimately leading us to the confines of the Heartbreak Hotel. But let's set the stage, right? We've already determined that the Heartbreak Hotel isn't a physical place, it's a state of mind. It's like a haunting melody that plays on repeat within the chambers of your soul. Like, it's, it's as if the universe has transformed every song on the radio into a secret message, a reflection of your inner turmoil, and you can't escape the poignancy of each note like someone told the DJ what you were going through personally. You don't think I understand heartbreak? Baby, listen, I can tell you a thing or two about heartbreak. Heartbreak is like a heavy, invisible anchor lodged in your chest, dragging at your heart and dragging it into the abyss with each passing moment. Your emotions swell like a sea with waves of sorrow crashing against the shores of your resolve, threatening to erode the walls that you've built to protect yourself. The ones you promised yourself that you would never let down for anyone else. And then here he comes. Here she comes, and you're feeling like, how did we get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. <laughs> and you let them shatter the walls you fought so hard to build, and they left you shattered, broken, with no protection, and vulnerable. And here it comes, without your permission, heartbreak. It's the emotional turmoil that can come from the end of a relationship, whether it was romantic or a family or a friend. It can be the loss of a loved one, the loss of a career, even the disappointment of unfulfilled dreams, right? We're gonna delve into three things that can land you in the Heartbreak Hotel, right? The first is the thought trap. Cause we've all had those moments when we can't stop replaying the past, wondering what we could have done differently. We'll explore how our thoughts can keep us locked in the Heartbreak Hotel and how to break free from that cycle. 
then we'll go into the emotion vortex, the whirlwind of emotions that can overwhelm us and make us feel, uh, make it feel like it's impossible for us to escape. We'll talk about how to navigate these emotions and regain control. Then there's the circumstantial quicksand. Sometimes the external circumstances of our lives can lead us to the Heartbreak Hotel. And to be honest with you, if we learn to get our thoughts and emotions under control, handling our circumstances would be a piece of cake. But we're so afraid. We're afraid of being alone. When did we stop being okay with being by ourselves and to ourselves? Do you know what alone really means? It means all one. We're afraid of being all one. That's what happened during the pandemic. Individuals came face to face with themselves and were left alone with themselves for long periods of time for the first time and they didn't like what they saw. So you have to learn how to be all one or alone will become lonely and you'll find yourself as a guest in our first room, the Loneliness Lounge. So let's talk about the Loneliness Lounge for all of my lonely hearts out there. Picture yourself in the corridor of the Heartbreak Hotel, right? Where the walls echo with the whispers of past heartaches. This room is like a vacuum for your soul. It can be especially suffocating as it makes you feel like you're the only person on the planet. Here you are the sole occupant of a vast emotional desert. And even the most outgoing individuals can find themselves trapped in the merciless embrace of solitude. So upon entering, the atmosphere of the loneliness lounge is heavy with solitude. The room is dimly lit, casting long shadows that dance across the walls. The air feels still as if time itself has come to a standstill. Every sound is muted and the silence is deafening. Does anyone know that feeling? The furniture, once vibrant, now appears faded, mirroring the melancholy that permeates the space. And now you're all alone and lonely. You gave them the best of you and they left with the best of you and didn't leave the best for you. As you check into the loneliness lounge and settle in, the world outside seems to recede into the distance. The once familiar faces become fleeting shadows and you're left yearning for companionship that you used to have. Even in crowded rooms, you feel like a solitary traveler in a foreign land, unable to bridge the emotional chasm that separates you from the others. The isolation can lead to a cycle of self-doubt and insecurity. You may question your ability to connect with people or wonder if you're somehow inherently unlikable. It's like a heavy fog that obscures the path to meaningful relationships, making it difficult for you to see your way out. Is there someone out here now with the key to the loneliness lounge? (laughs) So let's look at how we ended up here because the thing about the Heartbreak Hotel is you don't choose the rooms. The hotel chooses them for you and you don't know which room you're going to get until it's too late and you're already stuck. So in order to escape, you have to admit one thing to yourself and that one thing is I accepted this key. We have to admit to ourselves that we brought ourselves to this hotel. Now you have to ask yourself why and how. This is why you need to be in tune with your star player, as I continue to say in my Cat Williams voice. You're not in tune with you. We live in a society when no one knows who they are. We, we know who we want to be, but we don't know who we are. We don't know our triggers, and that's why we're so easily set off. No one should have the right privilege or authority to make you angry without your permission. We hand our power over so easily. So if we're going to escape, we have to take some time to res- to reflect. Take the time to understand why you are lonely. Because once you know the source, you can address it. You have to be willing to do the one thing that is hard for us to do. Take a look at ourselves. 
You see, self-reflection isn't about assessing the actions of others because it's easy to address what others did to you. It's not easy to address what you did to you. Michael said you got to look at the man in the mirror and ask yourself why you allowed yourself to end up here. But I didn't know. Did you not know or did you not want to know? If we're going to talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up a second. There are always signs. We just don't always pay attention to them because too many times we lead with our heart without the benefit of intellect. We go all in and fall head over, high, head over heels for an idea. We, we fall for what our heart tells us this person has the potential to be. We don't fall in love with reality. And when reality sets in and we realize we're not getting what we potentially saw, we're left hurt, we're left broken, and we're left lonely. We're giving our hearts a job it wasn't meant to have. We're telling our heart to think when it was only meant to love and forcing our intellect to go along with it. And we're mad at our heart when it can't fulfill the role. That's what a broken heart is. Remember the three things that I said can trap us here? The thought trap, the emotional vortex, circumstantial quicksand. So do you feel lonely because your thoughts tell you that you are? Then you need to assess why your thoughts are trained on loneliness. Why are your thoughts betraying you into believing you deserve isolation? Is it your emotions based on a thought? Because although they are not the same, your thoughts about a thing will trigger your emotions about it. Once you change the thought, you'll change the emotion. Let me give you an example. You had a major breakup, right? Now you're feeling lonely because you no longer have that individual who you invested so much in. So now examine the breakup. Was, was it in part your fault? Was it time, energy, communication, or lack thereof? Was it mutual? And here's where you have to be honest with self because we spend so much time looking externally, but this is going to require some introspection and honesty with yourself. No, I didn't spend enough time. No, I didn't communicate in the way one should when they're with the person they love. I contributed to this breakup and take full responsibility for my part in it. I'm not saying that I deserve it, but I have to admit to myself that I contributed to it in order to change my thoughts concerning it. Or maybe you were on one page and your partner was on another. That's why you have to learn to turn the pages together. This is something I'll deal with more uh, on another segment. But even if you made the mistake, forgive yourself. A lot of loneliness we experience is due to the unrealistic expectations we place on ourselves. So we hold on to the guilt because how did I let this happen? So it's not that you don't trust others. You don't trust yourself. If the error was yours, baby, fix it. There's a scripture in the Bible that says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If you're too prideful to admit you messed up and say sorry, you're the problem, not them. If the separation was not your fault, just learn to be okay. People are in your, in your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. Stop putting lifetime expectations on seasonal and reasonable people. Before you go all in, make them measure up. When you love someone, be it friendship or relationship, literally what you are doing is taking your heart and placing it in their hands and saying, I give you permission to do with this what you will, and you're hoping they won't drop it or break it. You're hoping they will see the value in it and cherish it. Watch this. Would you give a Fabergé egg to a five-year-old? Would you give the Hope Diamond to a teenager? Would you allow someone you just met to wear the crown jewels? No. Why? Because they don't understand its value. So why don't you place the same value on your heart? Why do you so callously give your heart and body to individuals who haven't proven to you that they can understand or handle its value? You have to know where the people in your life stand. Pay attention to the signs. There are always signs. We just allow our hearts to cause us to ignore them. 
Develop a strong support system. Those are lifetime connections. Those who will be there for you through thick and thin and not just when the weather is good. Many times we are lonely because we didn't take the time to vet who we allowed in our inner sanctum. And that's why we have to be careful who we attach to and who, we have, who we've allowed to attach to us. And some of us are just bitter. And that's why we're lonely. We're bitter at ourselves. We're bitter at life. We're bitter at family. We're just bitter. Have you ever met anyone that's just bitter? You can't get anything positive to come out of their mouth. Can't seem to find anything to be happy about. And that brings us to our next room, which is actually a double sweep. The anger in, which is attached to hate chambers. And we'll talk about those on next week. (laughs) So if you enjoyed this Wellness Waves Wednesday, Hit that like and subscribe button, and hopefully we'll see you on next week. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.